Uh, so next we have Feeney Q from Washington University in St. Louis, and she will be presenting on the cellular and molecular mechanisms of murine digit regeneration. Whenever you're ready. Injuries or diseases that lead to limb loss pose important challenges to the medical community. Almost 200,000 Americans undergo amputations annually, and so do many of our pets. This speaks to the fact that the regeneration of musculoskeletal tissues is limited, such that healing often culminates in scarring. However, there is evidence for digit tip regrowth following injury in humans, suggesting that we may possess an innate regenerative ability. To harness this ability, the mechanisms driving the regeneration of complex tissues must be better understood. Towards this end, I use the mouse digit as a model to study limb regeneration. After digit tip amputation in adult mice, various progenitor cell populations, collectively called the blastema, restore the bone and soft tissues. Interestingly, amputations that occur further up the limb result in scarring. The mechanisms underlying this differential response are unknown and could provide new insights into the development of regenerative therapies. Since bone formation is crucial for digit regeneration, I hypothesize that limb outgrowth is driven primarily by osteoblast lineage cells. To test this, I surveyed the identities and gene profiles of all the blastema cells. While multiple mesenchymal cell types contributed to regeneration, I noticed that osteoprogenitors and osteoblasts express genes known to drive embryonic limb development and morphogenesis, suggesting that in addition to making new bone, they might also help reestablish the proper limb pattern. Some of you may be wondering now, where do these osteoprogenitors come from and how might they contribute to digit regeneration over time? To answer this, I tracked the location and behavior of osteoblast lineage cells. Before amputation, I labeled the cells in the periosteum and osteum and the bone red. After amputation, the red periosteal and endosteal cells proliferated and differentiated into osteoblasts to form the new digit bone. A few even became fibroblasts, indicating some level of cellular plasticity. Next, I wanted to see if activated osteoprogenitors are necessary for digit regeneration. So I conditionally ablated proliferating osteoblasts. As expected, the bone failed to regenerate in the absence of these cells. However, there was still some soft tissue outgrowth, suggesting that partial recovery was possible without scar formation. In summary, I hope I've convinced you that osteoblast lineage cells are critical for digit regeneration. Strategies to activate these cells, as well as ways to prevent scarring, will be crucial elements of a biologic therapy for amputees. Ultimately, I hope this work will lead to novel approaches that promote the regeneration of complex tissues. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Benny. All right, give a minute for a question to come in. So if, if nobody else has got a question, um, Finley, could I just ask, very, very interesting kind of talk. I wonder if you could just say a bit more about, you mentioned briefly about the patterning. Could you just say a bit more about uh, what you've learned about the patterning of uh, limb in the limb regrowth and how the cells you've looked at may uh, kind of determine the patterning? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Uh, so I've noticed that the endosteal cells and the periosteal cells actually behave very differently, where the endosteal cells will kind of uh, reestablish the core um, shape of the original bone, whereas the periosteum will actually just add mostly to the dorsal portion of the bone. Um, and so if you do different levels of regeneration or of amputation, where you remove more of the periosteal cells versus the endosteal cells, you'll actually get um, different shapes uh, resulting from the regeneration. And I'm really interested in kind of understanding the differences and how the gene expression profiles might be different between these two types of cells. Could you look at it all between the signaling between the periosteal and the endosteal cells and how, um, how much they're signaling between them? Yeah, that's a really great point. So it seems like both of them are pretty similar. So I've done um, some EDU tracking and they all proliferate at roughly the same rate um, and contribute to the blastema at the same rate. I think in, in general, uh, their response to amputation is very similar, but it seems like they, they might have some spatial memory encoded and that's up to me to figure out in future experiments. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.